because you said that he was, yeah, they were going to Nori House that time on that trip. From where? He's a bombardier from Grand Rapids to Nori House. Okay. And the bombardier broke down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the bombardier. Yeah, it was a bombardier yeah. that broke it's down. In Lake Winnipeg. And it broke down in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, in the middle of nowhere. And so the guy that was with him, why was that guy with him? I think, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know whether, what, he was taking the guy home or got a ride with him. I'm not sure. Uh-huh. And anyways, he, uh, they broke down and Don said, I gotta walk. I gotta walk into Nori House, otherwise we're gonna die here. In the middle of winter, and uh, there was no way this guy was going to make it. I guess he was a heavy set guy, or he didn't have the stamina to walk, probably. Mm -hmm. My brother knew he wouldn't make it anyway. Mm -hmm. So then got him some wood, and uh, it was about how many miles? 20 miles, I think, to Nori House before they broke down. Something like that. Was, but anyways, mm -hmm. it's in the middle of the night already. And so my brother caught him a whole bunch of wood and set him up on there and lit a fire for him and told him, you can't go to sleep or you will die. Mm -hmm. You must stay awake and keep the fire going. Just put in a little bit at a time just to keep yourself warmed up. And mm -hmm. the guy didn't want him to go, but Don said, we ha I have to. We have to. There's no traffic coming this way in the next <laughs> yeah. five days. <laughs> Another bombardier is going to yeah. come by this direction. Mm -hmm. So my brother goes. I think he took a gun. He had a gun with him, I think. Yeah. So away he goes in case wolves or anything like that. So he starts to walk and he tells that guy, you got to make sure that you do not go to sleep. Because you will freeze to death if you go to sleep. I'll be back. I don't know how many hours my brother took. And he walked there. And the first bunch of houses that were there was my grandmother's. Into the mouth of the river of Nore House. And he eventually got there anyways. He got to Nore House and knocked on uh, my grandmother's door. And told him what happened and everything. By then he was just <laughs> freezing. <laughs> freezing also. And um, and he told the people and they got people together to go out and get this guy in, which they did. And the guy was still there with his little fire. <laughs> <laughs> Panicking type of thing, you know. And they picked him up and they, they picked him up and, and they, they took him back to the house. And then he said to Uncle Don, whenever you are in Winnipeg or anything, gave him an address, uh, I'll always be there to help you. I don't even know if the guy is still alive or anything. And then I'll always help you for anything you want. Like never go hungry or never be without a place. Hmm. And, he, and he always did whenever Don was around. I used to give him a call because I owe you that.